before you assemble your unit, you need to measure the floor to the ceiling height. You need a minimum ceiling height of 2 meters 200, as it says here. The ceiling height is required for when you stand your unit up. Because when you stand it from here, when you've assembled it, up like this, the top corner could catch on the ceiling if the ceiling is lower than 2 meters 200. I'm going to show you how to assemble a corner wardrobe in the modular range. In your double wardrobe shelf pack, you will receive uh, an assembly guide. It says, please ignore this guide if you have purchased a corner wardrobe conversion kit. So I won't need this one. I'll be working purely from the corner conversion kit assembly guide. With this unit, it is very important that you read the assembly guide as you're going. Because if you don't, you could get the panels in the wrong order. To assemble this unit, you'll be using panels from all four boxes. It is always advisable to assemble your unit on a piece of cardboard. This protects the side panel and the front edge of the unit when you're moving it around. Following my guide, I'm going to be putting the fittings to my right hand end panel that comes out of my standard wardrobe pack. Starting at the top, I put my metal dowels in. When you tap your wooden dowels in, you can push them in by hand, but occasionally you'll need to use a hammer. When you tap it in, tap it until the sound changes, like that. That way you know the dowel is in far enough. If you hit it too much, you could punch the panel through. Now I've fitted my metal dowels and wooden dowels. I'm going to be putting the shelf support parts in. And there you go, three holes from here. One, two, three. They go at this point here. Put two of those in. The hinges for your corner wardrobe look like this. And the hinges for your double wardrobe look like this. So fitting the hinge plates with the arrow pointing towards the outside edge, and that's the edge away from your groove, so this side. I'm going to be fitting them there. Working my way up, I'm going to be fitting them there. Following the assembly guides. Keeping going up. There and the last one is fitted there. This is the arrow I'm referring to. This arrow is always to the outside of your unit. Just screw these in. Before I complete this panel and move it to one side and start on another one, the last thing to do is to fit the hanging bracket for your hanging rail. There's my hanging bracket two types of screw that come with it, a Euro screw and a standard screw. So using the Euro screw, and I put my hanging bracket here. I then use my standard screw in the bottom unused hole. Now that panel's completed, and I'm just gonna move it off the one underneath. Next job is to put the cams into my top base and back rail. The cams themselves have an arrow telling you which way they should be put in. This arrow should always point to the outside or raw chipboard edge of your panel. Laying my panel down, I then insert the cams. And if when you put your cam in, you, you don't line it up correctly, you can always turn it once it's in the hole, making sure then that the arrow is pointing down. And put it into here, engaging it on the cams and down. As I'm going, I tighten up the cams. This locks the two panels together. I then repeat that for the top panel and the back rail. This. And the last one is the back rail. and tighten this one up as well. Taking my plinth securing bolt, I gently tap it into the hole in my plinth like this. And then using a screwdriver, 
I screw the two parts together. It makes a very secure join between your base panel and your plinth. My assembly guide says to use panel nine. Well, panel nine comes from your corner conversion pack. And then again, following the assembly guide, I put my metal dowels into the panel where required. At this stage, I'm gonna fit my shelf supports as well. And they go into here and here. And also the wooden dowels. At this point, you will probably require assistance to put the end panel onto your wardrobe. Like so. And then using the screwdriver, tighten the cams. Now I'm going to move my second end panel out the way and then I'm going to turn my wardrobe onto its front so I can fit the back panel. I'm now going to fit my back panel. To do this I'm going to require assistance to make sure that it stays in the groove as I'm sliding it into the unit. And sliding it up like this, you can use your back panel to make sure your cabinet is square and to do this you tack it at one point and then making sure that the line follows right along the bottom here and I need to tap my unit up slightly and then I have the same distance from here to here and that's squared my unit up. Before I stand my unit up the last job is to put the panel protectors in the bottom. Now ABS is very tough and durable if you're putting things into your wardrobe like a suitcase and you catch the edge, you won't damage it. Okay, so you push these in like this. You can push them in using your thumb, but if you can't, just tap them in very gently using a hammer like this. And then repeat for the other side. And then taking my shelf and keeping the edging stripped to the front, I put it into my wardrobe. Tap it down, like so. Following my assembly guide, I'm now going to build the corner conversion. The corner conversion only comes off of this side. I'm going to work my way through, putting the fittings on as described here. There. And then using the small shelf supports, I'm going to fit those in this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole. I'm also gonna fit my hinge plates at this stage, remembering to keep the arrow to the outside edge. Here, here, and here. I'm now going to put that panel to one side and work on the other panels in the corner conversion pack. I'm now going to be putting the fittings to the top and bottom of my corner conversion. Using the shelf supports that have a locking mechanism inside them, like that, making sure that the arrow points to the outside edge, corresponding with this hole here. These metal plates get screwed here using the pre-marked holes. So I need two for this panel. If you're worried about over tightening the screws in chipboard, you can use the cordless drill to put the screws in and then finish them off using a normal screwdriver if that's what you'd like to do. That's those two panels completed. I'm now gonna put those aside and work on the last tall panel. This last panel has pear wood on both sides and it matches the panel that we've installed here, which also has pear wood on both sides. 